You want me to shoot it right now? Yeah? Okay, I'll shoot it right now. Um, which one is this one? Oh, okay. Hey, dog and sales swaps. Okay, what a great group. I also want to point out one of the people that does the dog and sales swaps and does that yeoman work to keep it working. Sarah Otto, what a great lady. Always love hanging out with you. I want to talk to you about something that caveats on something that I put up on uh, dog and sales swaps before. Should I buy or should I rent a house? By the way, my name is Jim Green. I'm a realtor. Now, here's the thing. I like dealing with folks that are on the base because I was on the base. I used to be an instructor at ATRC who happens to now, after retirement, sells real estate. I like working with military, government people, veterans, uh, because we kind of all speak the same language. So yesterday's should I buy or should I rent thing, I want that to kind of piggyback into today about what's the difference between a pre-approval letter and a pre-qualification or pre-qualification pre-approval. Sometimes it's kind of murky waters and people don't really understand that. There's similarities between both of them, though. Uh, both of them are going to tell folks, hey, you know, there's a possibility that this person will qualify for this amount of money. Okay, so both of them say, this is the amount of money or the amount that you should be looking at. So if you qualify for a $300,000 house, I probably am going to suggest that maybe $500,000 houses don't work for you. Um, the other things are, is it takes into account and shows you the burden of the payment, okay? At that point, you'd be able to sort of take a look at it and say, well, you know, maybe I don't want to buy that much of a house because one of the things about it is, is, you know, if you got huge, huge mortgage payments, that takes away from other things and puts stress on your life, okay? So the thing that I really want to say here is the pre-qualification letter is when you tell your lender, hey lender, I want to buy a house. I want to go see Jim Green buy a house. And he turns around and he goes, okay, uh, so tell me what your income is and tell me what your assets are. You know, I know that you have gold stuck, gold or diamonds stuck somewhere in a security deposit box somewhere. And he'll take a soft hit on your credit score. Okay, and I do mean soft hit. Um, at that point, he'll turn around and go, yeah, okay, you'll qualify for this amount. And that soft hit that he's going to do is sort of like credit karma. So that is the part as far as the pre-qualification goes. Sort of like, yeah, he seems to be a pretty good guy, boom, or gal, boom, uh, why don't you deal with him? So we'll deal with it. Now, the other one is, is the pre-approval. Now, the pre-approval is a little bit different. Because now we're going to have you bring in documentation like W-2s and LESs and you got to verify your assets. So you're going to have to have the bank manager or somebody go in there and take a look at that safety deposit box and say that that stuff's truly there. And also at that point, the lender normally will go ahead and do a hard credit check on you. Which, by the way, hard credit check, don't get it all spun up about that. It's only going to affect your credit for a very short period of time for about five points as far as your credit goes. If you don't understand as far as credit goes, you have FICO scores. FICO scores go from between 300 and 850. Now, why should I give that to my realtor? Because now my realtor knows how much I can, you know, pay for a house and stuff. Be honest with you, we don't really care, but it will help out later on in this journey you're going to go on as far as house buying goes. And to give you an example of that, right now I've got a deal that's going on that has five different people that are bidding on a property. I went ahead and I had my client go ahead and do the pre-approval because I want my offer to look better to the seller. Sellers love to see pre-approvals. Uh, sellers love to see pre-qualifications because that tells them that you're serious and you're willing to go. There's a lot of times that uh, sellers won't accept it, won't, won't, uh, won't consider an offer unless there's a pre-qualification or a pre-approval letter with it. Now, that's all money stuff. And I'm not a money lender. That's not my job. 
I'm a realtor. I help people buy, I help people sell, and I help people rent houses. So that's what you, what's going on. I just wanted to point it out because there always seems to be a lot of confusion about it. Any of the money stuff that you might want to know. I know some lenders, and you guys can talk to USAA and NFCU and NSWC and those guys, all great lending organizations. Um, so you, I just wanted to give you a little taste into it, dovetailing off of what we talked about earlier concerning rent versus buying. Now, a couple of things I want to leave you with because we're going into this great weekend and it's going to be beautiful out tomorrow is uh, I heard through the grapevine yesterday that somebody's coming on your base to be the new commanding officer of CSCS. Please welcome him. His name's Captain Dave Stoner. Used to be a master, uh, used to be a uh, machinist mate chief. Good guy. I knew him back in the day from being the CIC officer on board the Mooseburger back when he was a JO. And I also had the opportunity to teach him over at ATRC as he was headed on his PCO ride, PCO PXO ride for um, Monterey uh, CG61. The other pearl of wisdom I'd like to leave you with on this uh, before we go on this weekend is humorously, if you're ever crossing the brow and the bosun mate comes up and says, hey, why don't we go to the gut? I don't recommend it. It's not a career enhancer. Other than that, have a great day. Talk to you later. 